Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Tina Jha. Foreign Secretary Harsh Vardhan Shringla said on Friday that the situation in neighboring Afghanistan is fluid and uncertain. Speaking at a virtual conference organized by the Public Affairs Forum of India, the Foreign Secretary listed the withdrawal of U.S. troops and the Taliban's relentless pursuit of power through violence, including targeted assassinations and capture of territory as reasons for triggering the uncertainty in Afghanistan. His comments came against the backdrop of the United States having completed the withdrawal of more than 50% of its troops from the country well ahead of a September deadline and violence by the Taliban having increased despite the talks with the group at different forums. So on this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze with experts the situation in Afghanistan, what it means for the war-ravaged country and also the Afghan peace process and the larger implications of a worsening situation in Afghanistan in the entire region as well. And for this, I'm joined by two distinguished panelists to discuss these aspects on the big picture today. Let me first introduce them to you. I'm joined by Mr. Arvind Gupta, Director of Vivekananda International Foundation, and Dr. Sriram Cholia, Foreign Affairs Expert. Thank you to both my guests for joining me on the program today. Dr. Cholia, let me begin the program today with you. In fact, first of all, let's try and understand how critical is the situation in our neighboring country, which has caused an uncertain environment in the country? Yeah, Tina, the war is uh, intensifying, uh, even as the peace talks are happening parallelly. Mm -hmm. So that's the big uh, contradiction and the tragedy there. Uh, the loss of lives and the destruction is tremendous. And uh, what we are seeing is uh, Taliban have been carrying out a lot of targeted assassinations of uh, key uh, civil society figures and uh, uh, individuals uh, who oppose their agenda. Uh, and also, uh, they have been mounting their insurgency and trying to, uh, practically, they are on the doorstep of most of the big urban centers across the country. So, in other words, they are knocking and they are basically saying that they could take over because until now, the control, the ter terrain was that the government forces or government allied forces held most of the big cities. Uh, Kabul, Kandahar, Helmand, uh, Mazar Sharif, and so on. But now, uh, Taliban are on the verge of taking over many of these places. And that's where I think um, they are counting on the U.S. withdrawal is almost complete. 60% uh, apparently is done. And by July itself, the U.S. forces will be mostly out. So the air power, which used to be there for the um, to support the Afghan uh, defense forces and special forces, uh, that is now going to be missing uh, or will be not as fast as it was in the past. So I think Taliban are counting on that to be able to make further inroads. And okay. then on the other side, there are these ISIS and other sectarian terrorist groups that are carrying out ghastly suicide attacks against, uh, especially against Shia minorities. So what it means is overall that, uh, you know, there is, you can call it a peace process if you want to, but practically for the people there and for the region, the insecurity is actually growing, not decreasing, and therefore uh, it's a matter of grave concern. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, so the fact that despite the talks going on in Qatar and several other places, the Taliban we are seeing, they're continuously engaging in a relentless pursuit of power through violence and concern has been expressed by the foreign secretary. Is it sort of an indication that the Taliban will have no interest in a political settlement which is being led by America once the departure of the American troops is over in September? Those of uh, us who have been following this uh, development for a long time uh, were never convinced that the Taliban were really interested in a so-called peace uh, negotiation or a peace talk. The fundamental of a peace uh, talk is that uh, there should be some power sharing. The Taliban have never really agreed to a power sharing. And uh, it was always expected that uh, once the U.S. Uh, troops begin to withdraw, and the original date was, uh, I think, uh, about 1st uh, May of, uh, first of May uh, this year, and now postponed to uh, 9 September of, uh, uh, 11 September uh, this year. The Taliban have been emboldened, and uh, this was to be expected. It has uh, been quite clear for uh, quite some time that the Taliban are not interested in power sharing. Uh, they want to set up an uh, emirate uh, in uh, uh, Afghanistan. 
and they want uh, uh, the uh, uh, US troops to leave. And then uh, they have not really changed in uh, these years. And uh, a Taliban takeover, an attempt to do so, will be uh, launched. And I think this is what we are seeing. But we should also keep in mind that this is the uh, initial phase of uh, a civil war, which is, uh, I think, beginning there. And uh, uh, this has happened earlier also. There are uh, uh, in the uh, 80s, when uh, uh, under the uh, UN brokered agreements, uh, the Soviet uh, troops withdraw, withdrew. Uh, then uh, the then uh, uh, President Najibullah, he lasted for uh, three years. Uh, today, the Afghan National Security Forces, uh, they have a, uh, an experience of fighting and they are, I think, doing uh, a good job. They are fighting bravely. Uh, of course, there is a propaganda on probably both sides about uh, what is the extent of fighting, how many uh, districts have fallen and not fallen. Uh, it's very difficult to make sense. But what Shriram said that, yes, they are... Uh, 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 every day they are uh, bearing a lot of big losses. But in the end, I think uh, it will, the situation will depend upon two uh, key factors. One is uh, how well the Afghan national security forces fight. Uh, and the second is uh, uh, what, whether the Afghans are able to uh, show and display political unity. Unfortunately, at this point of time, uh, even those uh, who are negotiating with the Taliban, on uh, they are also uh, not uh, united. Mm -hmm. And political disunity could turn out to be a major factor uh, in the uh, unfolding uh, civil war. Absolutely. And the manner in which we are seeing the Taliban emboldening themselves, in fact, they are ready to fill the vacuum post the, the, the September when the withdrawal of troops uh, uh, is over. But, uh, Mr. Cholia, how worrying is it for Afghanistan, its people and also the larger implications in the entire region? Well, definitely return of the Islamic Emirate of the Taliban, or at least some part of the country that will be de facto like an Emirate, because that is what is likely to be power sharing. What is the meaning of power sharing? You know, some ministries and some regions will be pretty much conceded to Taliban. So in that case, you know, the issue of minorities and of women and their rights uh, will come to the fore uh, Last 20 years, uh, uh, you know, they have had some uh, success in creating the, the U.S. Uh, presence there, was able to uh, create some kind of a civil society and a civilian life, which had been completely uprooted and uh, destroyed by Taliban from 1996 to 2001 when they were in power last time. So have they changed? I mean, there are different views on this, but the, the uh, ground reportage suggests that uh, the same Taliban will ban girls' education. They will, you know, uh, conduct executions in uh, public squares uh, for anyone uh, uh, suspected of uh, violating Sharia. These kind of, you know, um, atavistic uh, practices, which we saw with ISIS also in the Middle East, in Iraq and Syria, when they had the so-called caliphate, the same things they are going to try and do again. So I think uh, to that extent, many people are fearful. And in fact, that is one of the reasons why there will be a lot of resistance to Taliban this time. Unlike uh, when they came to power first time in 1996, at that time, already there was a civil war and people were looking for some kind of order. You know, it was just total chaos then. But this time, I think a lot of young people, especially in urban centers, who have got a you know a non-religious education and who have experienced some degree of freedoms and intermixing of the sexes and all that they will not accept going back you know so I think what we are saying India is also saying the Americans are saying everybody international community generally is saying is the gains of the last 20 years should not be just thrown away and lost. I think that is the fear of the Afghan people. And for the region, of course, the spillover effect is there. Uh, we can see, you know, both uh, the uh, eastern and the western side, the Iranians are worried because uh, if the Taliban return, and the Iranians have some linkages with Taliban, but the real fear is that the Pakistan-dominated uh, Taliban factions will run the show. And the Afghans resent it a lot. Most of the ordinary Afghans uh, believe that uh, they should not be colonized by Pakistan. And that danger is there. And I, in fact, look at Shah Mahmood Qureshi, the Pakistani foreign minister, saying Indians ought not to come there in such large numbers. Why are they present in Afghanistan in such large numbers? We are not there in large numbers. We don't have any true presence. But already they are using this 
you know, vacuum that they want their proxies to fill, and then they're going to say that Indians should not come in. And the sad part is, uh, you know, which we should be really worried is, the Americans are again said to be negotiating with Pakistan for air bases from which to operate uh, counter-terrorism missions inside Afghanistan. Because on the other side, the Central Asian states, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and, uh, and uh, others, Uzbekistan, are unwilling to give uh, the Americans bases because of the Russian influence and the Chinese influence there. But the Americans are trying. They're trying to negotiate with all the countries from where we can uh, launch you know, quick strikes back into Afghanistan, even after the ground troops withdraw. So there again, the Pakistanis will try to squeeze some you know, concessions and play their same old blackmail game. So it's not looking so good from the regional security point of view either, because then the jihadist menace is going to spread and we have our task cut out. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, so obviously for the Afghanis, uh, undoing the progress, the little progress that has been made over the past few years, once there was stability, there was peace in the region, there was progress in Afghanistan. And India towards that has been a major stakeholder. We invested heavily in Afghanistan in terms of uh, providing them aid and also in reconstruction activities that have taken place in the country. But towards the pursuance of this long-term commitment to peace and development in Afghanistan, what is it that India can do? What role can India play? Because destabilization of Afghanistan is going to affect us as well. Yes, uh, I think uh, you are right. Instability in Afghanistan has uh, always uh, impacted us uh, adversely. And uh, we should be ready for another uh, bout of uh, instability that will last for probably many years. And Pakistan is playing a nefarious uh, role. But I think this time around, India is uh, somewhat better placed, I think, to play a role. And I say that for two or three uh, main reasons. One is that uh, India is uh, quite liked in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we have been investing in Afghanistan in their uh, social infrastructure, in physical infrastructure, and a large number of Afghans have come and trained here. So India has a good stock in uh, 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 Afghanistan. And uh, whether it is the government, whether it is the Pashtuns or Hazaras or Tajiks or Uzbeks, uh, uh, in some Pashtuns at least, so India has, uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, acceptable to them. And in fact, many of the regional countries have also been telling India to play uh, as a positive role. Uh, the only thing is that India has not yet uh, quite uh, clearly stated what role it can play. And as you could see from the Foreign Secretary's uh, uh, statement uh, yesterday, that India is watching the situation uh, quite uh, carefully and closely. Uh, India is well aware of uh, what is uh, going on. And India probably has uh, contacts with uh, all sides. And uh, India is also in touch with uh, all the neighboring countries, uh, Central Asia, Iran, Russia, US, uh, etc. Uh, so I think India uh, should be uh, play, uh, preparing itself for a, a positive contribution to a regional uh, initiative. And there could be several regional initiatives. It doesn't have to be one. There could be many countries, smaller countries. Uh, last time also, for instance, it was India, Iran, and Russia, which played a crucial role in the last stages of uh, the war. And I think uh, India should uh, be ready to play that kind of a role. So we should be really discussing the Afghanistan situation with uh, the Afghan government, with the uh, various uh, groups uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, we should be also uh, in, uh, we should know what kind of a resistance is forming in Afghanistan. There is a large constituency of the youth and uh, women uh, who would look at India and uh, expect that India would play a role. And uh, there is also uh, the uh, UN efforts, uh, which are also probably might uh, be activated uh, because UN-sponsored uh, conferences uh, have also been talked about. So I think there also we can play a role. We are right now in sitting in UN Security Council. Uh, uh, the only thing that I think where we have to be uh, some, uh, careful is uh, the question of uh, boots on the ground. That is uh, a very uh, risky uh, proposition. So we ought to be careful about that. But I think in terms of uh, uh, the region, not only should we play a role, we should also insist that we should uh, have a, a role in that. And I'm sure the United States uh, would, uh, and Russia, etc., would welcome that. So we should be part of all these uh, initiatives, despite the fact that uh, the Pakistanis may uh, not like it. 
Absolutely. Despite Pakistan not liking it, for the first time, uh, Dr. Cholia, India has also changed its stance on engaging with Taliban because we want to be uh, in conversation with all stakeholders for long-term peace and stability in Afghanistan because it impacts the progress of the country and also it, it, it disturbs the regional harmony as well. So in, in that scenario, how, what is the kind of engagement that India can have with Taliban towards the peace process? Well, if we have uh, Dr. Jay Shankar was in Qatar uh, recently, and uh, he spoke with Zalmay Khalilzad, the U.S. Uh, you know, peace uh, representative for the peace talks, and with the senior officials of the Qatari government. And uh, various levels of our security establishment is uh, in touch with the Taliban elements now, and it's publicly acknowledged. And uh, we are trying to look for what we are calling nationalistic Taliban who will want to preserve the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Afghanistan after they come to power and into power sharing arrangements. Because, you know, when you are a guerrilla force, you can always take the Pakistani support. But once you are part of the state structure and acknowledged and legitimized as part of the state structure, you have to defend the integrity of Afghanistan from a Pakistani meddling and uh, uh, dictates. So that's where, you know, we are trying to look at who are the key players. I believe even Mullah Baradar, the main Taliban negotiator in Qatar, is in touch with us. And uh, we are looking at the, you know, the Iranians have some contacts on the ground. The Russians have, have players. The ones we will not touch are Haqqani network. That is the direct arm of the ISI of Pakistan and has engaged in killings and uh, terrorist acts and abductions against Indian citizens uh, uh, in the region. And um, the ones we will not engage with are, you know, Jaish e Mohammed, lashkar e Taiba, all these Kashmir-focused groups who also have some camps and associations and joint training missions with the allied Taliban factions. Uh, of course, we will not touch ISIS or Al-Qaeda. All those groups are there uh, in some form or the other, uh, especially in eastern Afghanistan, bordering the Pakistan. So I think we will, we're going to be selective. And we will look for different elements, as um, Dr. Gupta was saying. There are also the, uh, you know, the other ethnic minority groups in the used to be called the Northern Alliance, and we used to support them in the past, uh, and uh, we still have strong contacts there. Uh, but I think this time we will not uh, play the ethnic politics because we want to avoid civil war, and we would like to, uh, you know, create cross-ethnic coalitions across the ethnic lines, because that is the only uh, way to salvage the situation. Because the moment it becomes ethnic, then, you know, the uh, the, uh, the Taliban will say that, you know, this is basically a Pashtun land, we are the majority. So I think we are going to play it differently. And some Taliban factions will also see value in us. We have development assistance in Afghanistan. We can dangle a lot of carrots, which Pakistan cannot uh, dangle. Pakistan itself is uh, taking World Bank loans and is uh, getting bailouts. What financial support can it give to reconstruct Afghanistan after the war? India can do it. So I think we have to play on those elements. And I think, of course, the security situation is, is grave, as we discussed. But if we can find some balance of power, rough balance of power, to prevent total collapse of the state and takeover, then, you know, this more broad, wide-ranging, uh, multi-vectoral kind of diplomacy by India can work. Certainly. So towards this uh, regional initiative and the enhanced role that India can play when it comes to peace and stability in Afghanistan, uh, Mr. Gupta, which are the countries which India can rely on for this regional initiative? Uh, before I uh, talk about that, I think I just want to make uh, one additional point yeah, sure. about uh, discussing with the Taliban, etc. I think we have to be very, very careful as to uh, uh, when, uh, whether uh, and to what extent we... Uh, deal with the Taliban. Uh, look, what has happened in the last few years? The Taliban were being moleculed by all sides. And today they are emboldened. They saw the U.S. troop withdrawal as a uh, defeat for the U.S. and a victory for them. And as I said, they have not changed. And they want to establish uh, the, the Emirate. If they are not interested in power sharing, and which seems to be the case, then I think we should not overstate our capability to influence them, whether it is one faction or the other. Uh, and this may not happen because the security situation is deteriorating so fast that even uh, for those who are on ground, they are not able to do uh, very much. So it is really our effort should be to really link up uh, with the regional countries. Uh, you know, we can really play some role uh, in dealing with the you know, regional countries 
and mm-hmm. also friends uh, in Afghanistan, the groups who have been uh, uh, looking at India positively and who have benefited from this development and assistance, etc. So we should listen to them and, and so on. So at this point of time, it is very difficult to be definite as to what role you can play. You can try and play a role, but the dynamic is uh, such that uh, the deterioration in the situation is likely to happen with loss of life, etc. Having said that, uh, which countries uh, you said? Uh, it, uh, the, I think it's quite uh, obvious uh, the countries that we should really be uh, talking about. We should uh, uh, Afghanistan and neighbors, which is Central Asia, and uh, the uh, Iranians. These are the direct uh, neighbors of Afghanistan, and we should be in touch with them. Russia and the US, uh, they are also very important uh, player. So we should also be in uh, touch with them and be a part of uh, some of their initiatives. Although, of course, the US, we are in touch with them. But US has its own agenda because they are in a hurry to withdraw. They are even, I understand, even forcing today the Afghan government to uh, enter into some kind of a bilateral security arrangement uh, with Pakistan. Uh, you know, Khalizad was in uh, Kabul uh, recently, and uh, we came to know that uh, this was one of the things that was uh, talked about. So uh, we cannot really be a part of uh, such initiatives which really bring back uh, Pakistan's uh, primacy uh, mm-hmm. in Afghanistan. So we have to be careful uh, it, uh, uh, that uh, whom we talk uh, to and what we talk about. Uh, certainly, the Pakistan-Taliban combine, if it comes to power, as uh, Shriram said, this will be hugely uh, unstable for the region, and we would have to live with the, the consequences for a uh, very long time. Absolutely. So negative- and, and, and also there is fear that, you know, uh, if there is uh, instability in Afghanistan, w- what, what we saw after years of being ravaged when Afghanistan actually stabilized, there was little progress, millions of refugees made a return to the country. But now if the situation reverses, given the worsening situation on the ground, the consequences of this can also be reversed, Mr. Cholia. Is that a, a huge fear as well? Yeah, you know, the Europeans uh, and the others fear, you know, huge migrant refugee outflows. We have also hosted uh, thousands of Afghan refugees, long-term refugees for decades in India. And uh, so, therefore, definitely one of the things with the, you know, post-war, if at all there is a post-war settlement and, a, you know, a new state, what should be, uh, you know, about the return of all these people, displaced people and humanitarian assistance and reconstruction. And that's where I think India has strengths and acceptability much more than uh, most other players in the region. So if we team up, as Dr. Gupta is saying, with uh, our key uh, countries with whom our interests are aligned, like Iran and uh, with Russia to a lesser extent, uh, and even the Chinese, you know, we should bring them into the conversation because they will forfeit a lot of their investments in Pakistan in the CPEC if this, uh, you know, spillover effect of the jihadists uh, goes back inside Pakistan and restarts that uh, because they have a so-called Pakistani Taliban also. Uh, TTP. So those forces could also be emboldened if there is a victory of Taliban in Afghanistan. So it's quite complex and therefore uh, we should bring in all the key players who are aligned with our interests and uh, chalk out a joint strategy because without that uh, pure bilateral assistance, of course, we have been doing for a long time, that alone will not solve the problem. That can only work when, as I said, there is some kind of balance of power. Okay. So uh, what we have been discussing is that an emboldened Taliban will have adverse impact on the Afghanis. Afghanis. It will undo the progress that, have, that has been made in the neighboring country over the past few years, on the entire region as well. And there will be implications in the fight against counterterrorism that's also been pointed out by our panelists. Uh, Mr. Gupta, one final comment uh, from you on what is the way forward then, looking at the worsening situation on the ground, How can the world prevent Afghanistan from heading towards a longer crisis or a longer chaotic situation? I think we should, uh, the world should first understand the root cause of the problem. Why is it happening? And uh, this was very clearly brought out by uh, Shriram also, that it is the Taliban supported by the Pakistanis uh, who have been emboldened now. And I think Pakistan should be uh, brought under some kind of a pressure. That is something that we should be doing. But... Mollycoddling, uh, uh, you know, the uh, groups uh, which are uh, bent upon uh, the Emirates and their uh, backers and supporters in Pakistan, that won't help. I think some kind of a pressure should be brought on Pakistan not to, uh, you know, embolden and support this uh, Taliban for a takeover, 
and they have some influence on the Haqqani group and some other groups of the Taliban, and uh, they should play a positive role in this. Absolutely. So with that, I'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to both my guests once again for joining us on the program and sharing your thoughts with us on this very, very important subject. So once again, thanks to all my viewers as well for your time. We'll be back same time again with another topic on Monday. Thanks very much for your time.